Well, hi folks, Alex Wood, civil litigator here working with Redwood Legal, and we specialise in contested wills and probate and inheritance act claims. And this video is targeted at adult children who are wondering whether they can bring a claim against a deceased parent's estate after they have passed away. So this is a specific vlog for that category of people. In terms of the general law and advice around Inheritance Act claims of contested wills and pro probate, please have a look around the YouTube channel for videos on a more general footing. Although I have linked a couple beneath in the description box below for ease of reference. Okay, uh, the very first thing to say is, well, to give you an answer to the question, and the answer is a resounding yes. But as you will discover, as you go on to listen to the rest of this video, there are various uh, caveats and what's the word, secondary considerations. And please, 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 if you are an adult child listening to this video, don't expect at all to uh, be able to successfully challenge the will of the deceased parents or if they've not made a will and they've died what's called intestate, uh, don't expect to be able to get a share of the estate just on you know, the default basis that you happen to be their child. So I'm going to describe the, the legal landscape and tell you the, the story of the law in this area because I, help, I think this helps throw light on this critical key question. So, I mean, traditionally, English law, the law of England and Wales said, yeah, you can do what you like with your money. You can make a will and you can leave the whole lot to the Battersea Dogs Home. Yeah, and you can cut your children out. And that still remains the default position, yeah? That old sort of Dickensian position of if you want to write a will and you want to cut everybody out and you're a grumpy old sod and you don't like your children, yeah, you can cut them out, okay? I'll come on at the conclusion of the vlog just to address people who may be making a will and thinking about this issue. Well, that used to be the position, but in 1970. Parliament in its wisdom brought in an act, the Inheritance Act, and that actually contradicts or cuts against, if you like, the default position at common law. That's a bit of statute, and that says that you can challenge a will, an adult child, well, it doesn't have to be an adult child, of course, in fact, you're probably better off and likely to be more successful if you're not an adult child. But it says uh, you can cut across that default position and challenge a will or challenge an estate if the person has died in test state. But the critical thing is you need to come under the kind of the umbrella of the criteria that that particular piece of legislation lays out. So. The key word for you here, when contemplating whether or not you think you're going to fall into one of these categories, is maintenance is a good word and reasonable financial provision. And in section three of the Act, that is laid down, so you can always go and look at the legislation yourself online and scrutinise the law. So there are various sort of key categories. This isn't a comprehensive video but these are the most common areas or com most common categories that are likely to crop up. The first thing to note is just because you feel you know perhaps you had a very wealthy father and you just you, you, you just feel that you deserve or you desire a decent slice of the pie that is not enough okay but by the same token you don't have to be on subsistence level, okay? Because this uh, act is designed to provide financial provision. It's not designed to take a moral view of whether or not it's unfair for a parent to completely cut their child out of a will, okay? 
the other thing, as I've alluded to, is maintenance. Uh, and maintenance is, a, is an important word because don't expect to get like some capital lump sum if you are successful in a claim under the Inheritance Act. It's more likely than not that the court is going to take the view of what do they need in terms of the income needs of the future. And obviously a critical part of that is going to be you know, what your personal financial circumstances are. Okay. The next thing to note is don't be too narrow-minded about yourself. You may be in a difficult financial situation and indeed it might have been made worse by the death of the parent. But the court will also have regard to other people, other beneficiaries under the will, other people who may have claims, the same claims as you have. And obviously, therefore, when they're looking at the pot of money, the estate, they're going to balance those claims against your, your own. A common situation, of course, is where a parent divorces, you've got children from that first marriage, they remarry or they cohabit with another partner and they leave everything to that partner who may have children. Okay, so it's going to certainly look and balance the needs of that surviving partner against the needs of your own. I said it's uh, maintenance, but, and the English law I'm afraid is a, is a little bit woolly in this area, it could be a capital repayment. And in fact, I've looked at a case recently, a 2018 case, where uh, a capital payment was made in an Inheritance Act claim of a cottage to uh, to the person who was bringing the Inheritance Act claim. So it, the court has got flexibility and expect it to look at the individual circumstances of your case and make a general kind of global decision about what is best and what is the right award to meet your financial needs. Now the next thing is the court is going to look at the date of trial. The date when it comes to court as the yardstick as to whether or not you are in financial need and what amount of financial provision it needs to make. So, you know, I've seen cases where, and I've dealt with opponents where they say, well, your client got a payout 15 years ago, the deceased then helps their child with whom they were otherwise estranged to put a deposit down on a house and you know so she's been financially provided for what's the complaint okay unfortunately those arguments won't swim they will sink because the court is looking at now the time that the date the claim is brought what are the financial needs of you the claimant at that particular point in time okay one one little footnote on all of this is remember that there is a kind of a danger that if you are on benefits uh, and the court is making an award perhaps of a lump sum, it, it, it rarely does, but it might make an award of a, of a lump sum, be careful that the effect of a lump sum doesn't actually mean you're no longer entitled to those benefits because you hit a threshold and the way the benefit system works is if you've got a certain amount of money in assets, you might not get those benefits. So that's just a small footnote. So to conclude, uh, yes, you can make a claim if you are an adult child in the courts of England and Wales under the Inheritance Act. But remember that the default position is that a person is allowed to decide what to do with their worldly wealth upon death. And the, the law respects their decision. If they so choose to cut their children out of the will. And that has been reinforced reasonably recently in the past few years by a landmark decision of the Supreme Court, which I'll link below, called Islet and Mitz. Uh, okay. Um, now, if uh, I said I talked to people who perhaps were thinking of making a will and cutting out their children, if you are going to be making a will, you may think, well, I can write one of these letter of wishes in which I say it's my wish that for these good reasons, and I paid them 20,000 to help them buy their property 15 years ago, and therefore I'm cutting them out of the will. Unfortunately, uh, that might help, but unfortunately, it's uh, not going to put the lid on a potential future claim by a surviving child. 
might help, but it's not going to put the lid on a uh, on an inheritance act claim. My advice to you is, don't be so what's the word, uh, kind of black and white, and you know, don't discriminate in this wholesale way. If you really feel that a child is not uh, deserving, make an award of a smaller amount, but just make some award under your will to that child upon death. So at least then the court can say, well look, the deceased did make some provision for that child. But ultimately, the yardstick that the court is going to refer to is whether reasonable financial provision has been made and uh, what are the financial needs at the time of trial of, the adult, of that adult child. Because if they are in financial difficulties, then uh, making an award is far more likely. One little post note to what I've just said. Uh, be careful if you are then, before you charge off to the High Court and issue a claim under the Inheritance Act, be careful that you've done your preparation and your research well before you do that. Because there, uh, there is an issue of whether or not you can get a hold of the actual estate, whether or not there is an estate to go after. And the classic example of that is where, perhaps some time before their death, the parent has transferred the property into joint names with their partner, or maybe their now wife or husband. Okay, if they've done that, arguably there's no estate for you to go after, because automatically on death, uh, the, the wife's share goes to the husband. Yeah, that's automatic. So there might not be no pot of money, no estate to go after. However, you are fortunate in having a subsection of the legislation, section nine, which says that the court is allowed to treat uh, the deceased share for that purpose of the property is allowed to treat it as part of the estate for purposes of bringing an inheritance act claim. But it is nevertheless a, a relevant factor because a court, don't forget, is looking at this thing globally and taking account of other people's situations, not just your own as a claimant. It is going to weigh in the balance the fact that you may be requiring a surviving husband or wife or partner to sell their property in order to pay you out and what if they've got children and they're living in that property and it's a family home you can see how then the court is going to be less inclined to give you uh, an, uh, an award or, or at least a much lower award than you thought you were going to get and that's often what it comes down to the size of the award because uh, even in the landmark case which went against the adult child of Islet and Mitson in the Supreme Court, the highest court of the land, uh, nevertheless she did come away with £50,000, although probably a large legal bill as well. So do your preparation before you go into battle. Now if you like this video then please do click on the subscribe button. And if you want help from Redwood Legal in the area of contested wills and probate or any other of the legal sectors in which we operate, the very best way of doing it is to write an email describing the story of your case and attaching in nice apple pie order and chronological order any key documents. We do do no win no fee and no win no fee is appropriate for these types of cases but invariably, because of the complexity of them and the, the amount of uh, paperwork, etc., and the fact that we need to take quite detailed instructions, you're going to have to pay some money initially for us to properly review the case, properly advise you on the prospects of the case, uh, and, and in terms of you know fighting it forward through the courts, we need to be confident that the case has merit before we enter into a no-win, no-fee arrangement. But we do do no win, no fee. Thank you for tuning in and look forward to vlogging to you in the very near future. Bye for now.